feel like I'm really overdue for making this video, but Bosch has come out with loads of new updates for their new smart system. And there's been some other videos made by others focused more on electric mountain bikes. In this video, I'm gonna be a little bit more focused on commuter and cargo bikes, since that's primarily what we focus on. There's a bunch of things that people have been asking for that all largely have been released this year. So I'm sure a lot of people are really gonna appreciate this. The smart system was launched in 2022, bringing more connectivity and functions to the already popular Bosch e-bike systems. But it lacked the full functionality offered in previous versions like dual battery, e-shift, and more. This year all that changed and the full range of features are released, most of which will be covered in this video. We'll still see plenty of bikes on the market from previous generations and they'll likely remain great options for those that don't need to be on the cutting edge of tech. Beyond new features like e-shift and dual battery capabilities, they came out with two entirely new motor systems called the Performance Line SX and Sprint, which is a faster version only available in the US and New Zealand. Essentially lighter weight versions of their high performance CX and speed motors, adding to their family of motors, which include the Active, Active Line Plus, Performance Line, Performance Line Sport, as well as their CX Cargo Line and Speed Motors, which complete their offering for all rider profiles. The SX and Sprint Motors weigh only four and a half pounds, making about two pounds lighter than their CX and Speed Motors and it has the highest weight to power ratio out of all their motors. It has a bit less torque to it at 55 Newton meters compared to 85 Newton meters, which you'll find on the CX and speed motor, but it still will assist you up to 340%. You just need to work for it a little bit more. I think it's a really ideal motor for a lightweight urban commuter, or perhaps somebody that wants to be a bit more sporty. I think that they're targeting towards the segment of gravel riding and that sort of thing, but think of it as a commuter, I think people really appreciate having a lighter weight option to make it easier to climb up stairs or other kind of maneuvers you might have to do in more of a dense urban environment. If you're in a very hilly area or hauling lots or just want to work less, the standard CX or cargo line or speed versions would likely be ideal for you. But I'm excited to see some more of the lightweight e-bikes coming out with this drivetrain. Reese Mueller has this new culture using this drivetrain and I think that that's going to be really popular. It's really good looking and I'm looking forward to seeing even more lightweight e-bikes because we really need them in places like New York City where many people, they don't have the option of bringing a bike into an elevator or things like that and they have to carry it upstairs. So seeing bikes that are getting lighter and lighter is definitely welcomed in my book. As with all the new smart system motors, they have custom riding modes that you can control with your phone using the Flow app before you ride. It gives you the flexibility to be able to fine tune your riding style by adjusting things like dynamic dynamism, power, speed, etc. The auto mode is also super cool, which gives you the full range of assistance from eco to turbo, adjusting automatically to your intended needs. Some additional features in the new updates include the new bike lock feature. Basically, your smartphone or your Bosch display can be used as a digital key to unlock your bike. I hope that in the future, this starts to help to address some of these security concerns, similar to how the theft rate of iPhones really diminished after them being able to brick them, if you will. It's essentially the same type of technology that you really can't use it anymore. You need to go to a dealer or go directly to Bosch to get it unlocked again. So I, I like this concept. I think that we can use technology in this way to perhaps make theft less desirable. What do you guys think about that? Do you think that we'll see less theft as a result of these sort of technologies being introduced more and more? The app also saves the parking location as soon as you turn the system off, which is pretty cool. But speaking of security, the new systems also have the option to add the bike alarm. This is an additional module that can be added to the bike offering a two-stage alarm with GPS tracking. It has an audible alarm and it will notify you if the bike is being moved and track its location throughout the app. It's a specific hardware device that plugs into the Bosch Smart System motors. Now it does require a paid subscription, but it comes with a one year subscription for free, which is pretty cool. After the free year, it's only about $4 a month, which I think is worth it considering the connectivity and communication tools it includes. This is an optional upgrade for any Smart System bike, but some bikes are even including this as a standard feature, including many of the turn HSD models, which I think is pretty cool. 
I'm also really excited to report that ABS is finally making its way to the US. Now it was introduced last year to Europe and some other markets, but it's just now making its way to the US. I think that this is a technology that makes a lot of sense for a lot of urban bikes, especially cargo bikes. ABS is anti-lock braking system. It has sensors on the front and the rear wheel. It can sense if it's skidding or, or sliding. And with that, it actuates a, another module that's mounted usually in the front of the bike and it can adjust the actuation of the caliper or the brake similar to how it works on an automobile but just a different adaptation for the bicycle so i anticipate that it's going to be a popular option most of the recent Mueller lineup is available with abs and for some they might feel like this is an unnecessary bit of tech but witnessing people in near crashes or even perhaps crashes i think that abs will be a technology that could really help make bikes more safe that may or may not be something that you're interested in, but I wonder what your thoughts are on this. I mean, are we going too far with the tech? I think that there's a lot of benefits to this stuff, although they are certainly adding to the cost. I think on average it's adding somewhere four or $500. But I do think that it kind of makes it accessible to more people. Maybe it makes it safer for more people if they don't have as much experience, which is pretty commonplace. Unfortunately, I don't think it's something that's gonna be retrofitable, but I do think that we'll see it on more and more bikes in the future. On the display front, they're continuing to expand their lineup. Now they've added from the standard Purion display, they now have this display called the Purion 200, which has really all the features you might want on the display in a really nice small screen. So it's kind of tucked away and, and pretty simple. But if you wanted, you can add additional items to this display, say like a Kiox 300 or a Kiox 500. But if you wanted an even simpler display, you can use the mini remote drop bar which is made specifically to work with drop bar bikes, but I could see it working with other bikes as well and just kind of giving you more places that you can put it because it has a hinge on it. Normally it's kind of difficult to get a display onto a drop bar bike, but this gives you more options to kind of get around some of those weird curvatures of the bar. But I really like that the new smart system displays are really easy to change and retrofit. It was something that was a little bit challenging with previous versions where you might have to rewire it to the motor, but this you can use the same wire that comes from the motor up to the display and you can easily retrofit them so i anticipate that more and more people are going to be upgrading and changing the displays perhaps using their smartphone with their display with the smartphone grip so they also have the new kiox 500 which is a slightly larger version of the kiox 300 I'm not sure if they're gonna eventually do a Nyon display as well, but it seems like the Kiox 500 is kind of fitting that role a little bit of having a, a larger display for those that want, you know, something a little bit easier to read and that sort of thing. It also includes new audio announcements, which is really nice. So you can actually hear your GPS tell you which turn to take and different things like that. So you can really keep your eyes on the road. So, and speaking of navigation, they've also made some new improvements there, which include more accurate calculations, so estimated time to location, but it's optimized with each ride, it has the ability to calculate ascents, descents, and a quicker alternative route suggested after a missed turn. One thing that's kind of interesting here is they're also watching your previously rides, so it will kind of incorporate that into your mapping to suggest the same sort of route if you have a preference in the way that you like to go or little detours, it'll include that in a recommended route in the future. So if you already have one of these displays, you have the smart system, you'll see some of these updates come through and it will unlock a lot of these features. Some of them are unique to specific hardware, but most of it is available to most of the technology that is out there already. They also have some additional software updates to include this thing called sprint mode, specifically if you want to ride a little bit more sporty. It's gonna give you more assistance in this more high cadence riding. This is common with people riding like road bikes or gravel bikes or that sort of thing and they're spinning really fast. Normally you might not get as much assistance there, but if you put it in sprint mode, it's saying I want assistance even though I'm just spinning at a high rate of speed. I appreciate all these little details to accommodate different people's riding styles. They now also include the Active Line and Active Line Plus motors, which are usually found on more recreation and urban bikes for those that don't need the extra power, but still a great option for many applications. You also see the Performance, Performance Sport, as well as their CX Cargo Line and Speed motors, which complete their offerings for all rider profiles. They've 
also fully expanded their battery lineup to include the Compact Tube 400, their most compact, most energy dense battery that they have available. This paired with the SX motor will allow you to have a total system weight of around eight pounds. So it really allows those bikes become lighter and lighter. And for the power pack now, we have a 400 watt hour frame mounted option as well as a rack option along with the 545 frame mounted option and the 500 watt hour rack option in addition to the 725. So you got loads of different options, but I think one of the things that people are really looking forward to is a dual battery option. And that is now available with all of their batteries. So something that we're starting to see on more and more cargo bikes and different things like that, a really nice way to go if you wanna have that extra range on deck. One other option for batteries that I think a lot of people are really gonna like, it's called the Powermore 250. So you can see some bikes with a 750 watt hour battery paired with the 250 50 watt hour range extender to have a total thousand watt hours of power. And I think that this is going to be a really popular option. Historically, some of the bikes that have been very popular for us are dual battery bikes like the Risa Mueller Supercharger, or the Super Delight have dual integrated batteries. And I think that more people might opt to go with a Charger or a Delight, which is going to have a single onboard battery and then the addition of this like power more to have a thousand watt hours on board is pretty nice and then you could always just carry an extra power more with you if you want it it's only three and a half pounds so i always recommend for people to optimize for their most use scenario it's perhaps not that common that people are going to use all the power all the time so it could be nice to have a lighter weight bike when you're not using it and then just add it on whenever you want and the way it works is you basically mount it to the frame and then there's a cable that attaches to one end of the power more and then the other one goes into the charge port so it does require the bike to be built in such a way that it can accommodate that. Now, many bikes will have water bottle cages that you can mount this to. That's usually the type of system that's used and there's a variety of different cable lengths. So you'll see that on certain bikes like Risa Mueller has it available on many of their bikes that you can add this power more extension. But there's some bikes that in theory it's compatible with, but it's not actually an option from the factory. And I think that that's just because there's not really a clean way to do it from the factory where the water bottle bosses, it might not be so easy to do it. If you get creative, which I like doing, uh, there's definitely a way to do it. So I'd say as long as the charge port is not in a place where it's gonna get hit with like a pedal or something like that, it, it'll be fine. And even still, you know, one thing to note is the way that the plug is set up, it's actually like an L-shaped plug. So it, it is pretty streamlined. I was actually wondering even if some companies might end up like running this on their own, just use the power more battery with say like the SX motor and you could have a super lightweight system. I don't know, maybe we'll see it. I haven't seen anything yet, but I think that that could be kind of cool for like a folding bike or some sort of interesting design. Um, it could, you know, perhaps allow you to like hide the battery in different unique ways because it's not much bigger than a water bottle. One other thing to note about the power more, if you run exclusively on the power more, not paired with a larger battery, it would give you less torque on some of the higher torque motors like the CX and the speed motor. I think for the SX and some of the motors that are not drawing as much, it won't be any change there. But if you have one of these higher torque applications, it's generally gonna draw more amperage and the battery is not really so capable of that. So it will adjust accordingly. So usually it's better to kind of run those in tandem, but it's definitely important to note that, that detail. Something else we're really excited about is the introduction of eShift on the smart system. So if you've watched this channel, you probably noticed we're pretty big on Rolla, really like the NVLO automatic system as well. To have that option available now in a smart system is super cool. So basically you can have electronic shifting available, just a push of a button, or in the case of the NVLO automatic, fully automatic shifting, you just basically select the cadence that you want 
and the bike is gonna shift automatically. This is also available with a new drivetrain provider, three by three, kind of seen limited introduction here in the US. Maybe we'll see more of that in the future, as well as the Shimano system. I've also been looking at retrofit options. I do think that the way that some of the cabling on these things work might perhaps make it a little bit easier to do some of these retrofits. Generally speaking, you'll need to get approval from the manufacturer. And so we've been kind of working with some of the manufacturers that we work with to try and find what's possible. If that's something that you're interested in, let us know. And, you know, again, we can try to find different ways to get creative and, and make things work. We also have the two amp compact charger available, which is half the size of the four amp charger. Now keep in mind, because it's two amp, it has two amps of current flowing from it. So it will take twice as long to charge as the four amp charger would take, but it might be a nice option to carry with you just as a backup or a spare. Now you might be wondering, when are we gonna see all this stuff? This is model year 2024. Usually most of this stuff is slated to be introduced for the year 2024. Some of this stuff we're actually gonna see pretty soon, but some of the things are gonna take a little bit longer. The e-shift system to my understanding standing is going to be next year as well as dual battery. If you think about it, just like the way that it works, it's like sometimes there's certain hardware that might be dependent there. I did hear that the SX and the Sprint motor might be available earlier this year, which is pretty cool. I'm definitely excited about that. ABS, E-Shift, dual battery. I think that that's going to be our early next year release. The software updates, however, will be available from now onward. So we'll start to see more and more of that stuff just kind of come over the air, which is pretty cool. One of the great things about the smart system overall is that you can just get the update. You don't need to go to the dealer to do that. As much as we love to see your face coming in, I think that people appreciate the ability just to get these things automatically, just as you would on your cell phone or computer. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about all this new tech. Are we going a little too far with it? Do you think that these are welcomed, exciting additions? I personally do, but I'm always interested to hear what other think on these topics and if you have any questions about this stuff please leave them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them if you're in the u.s and we can support you with purchasing an electric bike with one of these systems we'd be happy to we have several stores the name of our shop is called propel same as the channel and uh, i look forward to seeing you in a future video all right well take care <laughs>